I'm here with Cindy. Hi. This is our second lockdown. Does that come out right? Yeah. Yeah. Is that cool? Yeah. Is that good? What do you think of it? How are you feeling about today? Feeling good. I'm ready to go. Just tell us a little bit about you, so remind us of who you are, where you're from. Well, I've been living in London for 22 years, but I grew up in uh, Nebraska on a farm in the middle of the U.S. And you have, I mean, ultimately, when it comes to doing a driving test, you have a U.S. license, or had a U.S. Yeah, license. Yeah, yeah, recently had. Yeah, yeah. it's expired. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah okay. but I've been driving for 35 years. How do you feel about driving in the U.K.? Um, I find the signs, the road signs difficult, the road markings difficult, the roads are too narrow. Um, <laughs> yeah. I have many complaints. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah, I definitely space, space is a, is a premium yeah. in mm -hmm. this country. We don't have as much yeah. space as you guys mm -hmm. have in the States. Okay, so listen, what we're going to do is, because we've already done one of these, if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it at the end so you can go and have a look at it. Like, comment, and subscribe. It really does boost the channel. In fact, yeah, hit us up in some comments. Give some love to Cindy. Let us know what you're thinking. At all times, I'd like you to follow the road ahead, unless I say to turn left or turn right, unless road signs indicate otherwise and if I need you to turn I'll tell you in good time one maneuver possibly an emergency stop and I'll be asking you some show me tell me questions and in this test we're going to be doing about 15 to 20 minutes of independent driving which will be road signs tell me how you would check that your brake lights were working no idea how would you test that your brake lights were working just think about logically for here for a second um get out of the car and look and see if they're working Ask somebody else to get on the brakes and look at it. That's yeah. it, right? You need somebody else to do it, don't you? Um, okay, so the answer to that question is obviously yeah. you switch the engine on, foot on the foot brake, look for a reflection, mm -hmm. and if you don't have a reflection, mm -hmm. you are somebody else. When we see you next, we'll be starting the test. Drive on when you're ready. Okay. On this driving test, Cindy's going to be following road signs, something that she's not completely comfortable with. And then with. we're going to take the second road on the right, please. First is here. At the beginning of a driving test, I presume we'd probably all want it to be relatively simple. But this test is going to be anything but. If your nerves are sky high, the last thing you're going to want to have to deal with is loads of double parked vehicles. Cindy, however, remains calm, lets the vehicle finish off its park, and then waits patiently for her to proceed. Directly behind this parking vehicle is another double parked car or a car that's waiting to come through. Cindy's a little bit hesitant in getting moving, but not enough for this to become a serious problem. So this is not noteworthy in this case. And then at the roundabout turn right, please. When she comes around the roundabout, that's when the real fun begins. All this at the beginning of a test. It all starts with just a few pedestrians suddenly popping out of the blue and an oncoming car and there's a couple more. After the car comes by she waits nice and patiently and then on the left someone else pops up. It's looking clear now so she starts to present. Oh, a few more. It's all happening today, isn't it? And then as she's making her way down the road, it's all looking nice and oh, easy. At the end of the road here, turn left. All comfortable. Nothing else could go wrong, apart from a bloody great truck coming down the road. All things considered, I think Cindy dealt with all this quite well. What is it that we all say about the first five minutes of your driving test? Well, that was a test. <clears throat> Back to serious. Cindy deals with the roundabout well. She responds well to the road markings. At the roundabout, turn right, fourth exit. So we're going to go round the roundabout and come back the same direction. And just a side note on this. Even though there's a car parked where it shouldn't be, Cindy doesn't fall into the trap of crossing this solid white line. These lines are there for a reason. In this case, because of the giveaway line. Upon the exit of this roundabout, Cindy checks her mirrors after she signals, but in this case, it's just not noteworthy. 
She then makes sure that she cancels her signal so she doesn't confuse anybody at this next junction. She's also careful not to cross the solid white line. Both of these would lead you looking down the barrel of a serious fault. Cindy manages her speed well as she approaches these parked vehicles on the left hand side and she initially positions very well but for some reason she moves closer to the parked cars. If you want to maintain a normal speed, there's absolutely no problem of crossing the center white lines, especially as there isn't any oncoming traffic. But even if there were oncoming vehicles, it's quite a wide lane. She does, however, reduce her speed well when she notices the people in the street. With the oncoming cars, the space is massively reduced. This part she managed well. And if you just find somewhere to pull up on the left in a safe place for me, please. Cindy checks both mirrors and then pulls up on the left in a safe place. Brilliant. Drive on when you're ready. Cindy does effective observation as she moves off here, but she doesn't signal. But as she goes to move off, there's a car coming up behind us. And unfortunately for Cindy, it comes right up behind us. It would be up to the examiner on the day to decide whether this was serious enough. But for today, this is a serious fault. And then at the roundabout, turn right, please. Cindy approaches the roundabout well, checking mirrors and then doing all the early observation and takes the opportunity when it comes. Okay, so we're gonna come up to two mini roundabouts. On the first one, turn right and on the second one, follow the road ahead. And they're in reasonably quick succession. Okay. okay. Cindy thinks we're turning right and then left. Right and then left. Which I then correct. She deals with the first roundabout well, but the second she forgets to cancel her signal. Or she still thinks she's turning left. No, sorry, right and then ahead. When exiting a mini roundabout, there is no need to signal left. Now follow the road ahead. Unless you think it's going to benefit somebody. But now she's just very confused and she still has her left signal on. This of course is telling everybody that she intends to turn left and that's why they're not giving way to her. Just cancel your signal for me please. Because it's very confusing to people. That's it. I waited as long as I could to allow her to cancel the signal, but I just didn't really feel like getting pulled over by the police. This is a serious fault for correct signal. Okay, and then just find somewhere to pull up on the left in a safe place. After a brief pause, we're back on the road and Cindy is approaching a tricky situation. We're going downhill with parked cars on the left-hand side and it's on a bend. It's important to get your speed right on approach because you should always be anticipating something coming. She enters the gap just a little bit too fast. And for this reason, she picks up another driver fault for clearance to obstructions. Okay, so we're just gonna follow the signpost to the A1 here. Now, if the road markings are really poor, I will tell you where to go. A1. Uh, a central London. Say A1. Central A1. London, yeah. So that's this way. Yeah. There. If you just pick this left lane, please. Left lane. That's it. So the road markings are really poor, so you can't see them. Okay, but it's written on the ground, A1 here. Okay? You won't take your word for it. It's right in front of you, but okay. it's very difficult to see. Okay. Again, only because the road markings are so poor, I'm helping her out with which lane to pick. If the signage is non-existent, I would expect the examiner to help you out. I want that. A1. Yeah. A1. Cindy is still confused, so I help her out again. However, the clue is here. If you're in the left-hand lane, you should maintain the left-hand lane. So this is a driver fault for normal driving position. However, if there had been someone behind us, this would have escalated. Okay. 
and then at the next set of traffic lights, which is about uh, 600 yards, six to 800 yards, we're going to turn right. Well, that was a classy route direction. However, Cindy responds well and moves immediately into the middle lane. She then looks to move into the right-hand lane too, moving correctly just one lane at a time. She does move to the right-hand lane a little bit early, but there's absolutely no traffic, so in this case, it's not a problem. But if you do move to the right-hand lane, you need to make sure that you're maintaining the appropriate progress. And then the traffic lights are going to turn right, just to remind you. What I mean by this is you must be traveling at the correct speed for the traffic conditions. The road signs are definitely bothering Cindy. It's not one of her strong points. Hopefully from here on out, it's gonna get easier. That first one was certainly quite tricky. And then we're just gonna follow the signposts to Hendon Central. Cindy's approaching the next sign and this one she manages to read. She checks her centre mirror, but not her right mirror for moving round that parked car. Is ahead. In this case, it's not noteworthy. She reads the road markings well and moves into the left lane. Cindy nicely checks all three mirrors as she moves off at these set of traffic lights. And here we have an example of why you should always be considerate about where you park your vehicle. Although I do appreciate that sometimes it's hard to find a suitable location, this is definitely not one. I'm sure by the time they come back to their van, they'll have made a few new friends though. Every cloud has a silver lining. As Cindy passes through this tight gap, she keeps her speed low, just on the off chance that a pedestrian could suddenly appear. So the guy's parked his Accardo van. Look what he's doing. For someone who's used to doing most of their driving in central London, this is now what I would call bread and butter. It's busy, lots of traffic, but everything that Cindy's used to. And then still continuing the signs to Hendon Central, yeah. As I'm sure you can't actually read that sign, Cindy is turning right at the next mini roundabout. Cindy manages this mini roundabout very well. It's a great example of how you can use the left on the roundabout to block the right. She pauses ever so slightly, which encourages the truck to move, which then in turn blocks the van leaving the space free for her to move forwards. Her signal does cancel on her and she fumbles with it, but she does reapply. So again, not noteworthy. Feel free to rewind that if you are struggling with mini roundabouts, but for Cindy, well done. And then follow the signposts to West Hendon. And again, because it's quite hard to read, Cindy's gonna be following the road ahead at the next set of traffic lights. Cindy does move into the left lane, if not a little bit late, but she does check her mirrors and over her shoulder. I'm sure some of you will have noticed that she could have gone straight ahead from the right-hand lane, but if you do that, you take the risk of being blocked by vehicles waiting to turn right. This can just create unnecessary problems, so when you can, move back to the left. And then at the end of the road here, turn right for me, please. Cindy has absolutely no problem on this junction. It's quite simple, clear, and she takes her opportunity when it comes. Shortly, I'm about to ask her to do a pull up on the right. And if you could just find somewhere to pull up on the right in a safe place, please. Doing a pull up on the right sometimes can be quite tricky, especially if road markings are hard to see. In this instance, Cindy has no problem at all. But if you're struggling to see road markings, always look out for little signposts. And if there are no posts, check the street lamps for signs too. Okay, I'd like you to reverse the car back about 
10 meters, keeping reasonably close to the curb. Reverse the car 10 meters. Cindy does an overall good job here, but she doesn't check pavement side blind spot. When you perform a reversing maneuver on your driving test, it's part can you do the maneuver and part demonstration. The examiner only gets to see you reverse once and you only have one opportunity to demonstrate that you understand the dangers, the risks of reversing. By not checking her blind spot, Cindy picks up a serious fault for observation on the right reverse exercise. You can see on my face how I feel about this. On the marking sheet, there are only two boxes that an examiner can tick, observation and control, which simply breaks down as, can you control the car and are you safe when you're reversing? So when it comes to your driving test, when you perform any form of reversing, thank you very much. Drive on when you're ready. Regardless of whether you need to do a correction, don't forget to do the correct observation. I think I've made the point. Cindy moves off well after she waits for her gap. And if you could follow the signposts to the north, please. Cindy is going to be turning left at the traffic lights and then it's a straight run back to test centre. And then at the traffic lights we're going to turn left here actually. When Cindy goes to turn left at these traffic lights, she just swings the car out ever so slightly to the right. There's a motorbike coming in the middle lane. She doesn't interfere with it, but the swing out is totally unnecessary. This is a driver fault for steering. And then we're gonna take the second road on the right. The first is here, second is there with that white van's coming out. And we're back at test centre. Switch the engine off. That's the end. Okay? Yeah. How was that? Okay. Yes? Not great. Okay, so the, the, the very first road sign mm. that you were taking, it's Look, the road, there is a road marking to indicate which lane you should be in, but it's rubbed out. And then also with the traffic, as you're approaching it, it's just really difficult to see. They could, they could write it again. They mm -hmm. could do it better. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is it possible that an experienced driver might be struggling to see where it is? The sign does indicate where it is. Yeah. But it's just, you, you would just have to have looked at that and you would have seen the A1 is that one. And then you've got the road doing this. So it has to be left. Mm -hmm. it just has to be ahead in yeah. the left-hand lane. I'm not going to ask you how you think you did. So you didn't pass that? Yeah. Okay, now we know that the major one was the, the roundabout, mm -hmm. the signal. Yeah. You understand I had to intervene there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'd already confused a couple of people, that's why they were going on you. Yeah. I gave you another serious fault. I, it was the first pull up on the left and I get you to move off again. Yeah. You normally don't have any problem with this whatsoever. You moved off without a signal, which doesn't matter. It's definitely a driver fault because you had a car in front of you, they could probably benefit mm -hmm. from you telling them they're going to move off. But then you had a car coming up behind you. Now, I am denied on this, but the car came right up behind us. And it is possible, depending on your examiner, how they perceive it. Now, I asked myself the two questions. What would I have done? I wouldn't have moved. Yeah. Did we interfere with the driver? Uh, yes, we did. What level of interference? Not massively, it's borderline. It's kind of one of those things where it could go either way. Yeah. Because this is a mock driving test, mm -hmm. I'm gonna escalate it to a serious. Observations on the reverse. The very first right blind spot check, yeah. pavement side. How important very would be a right important. blind spot? You yeah. did do it afterwards, yeah. but the initial one didn't affect anybody, didn't hurt anybody. I'm going to serious fault it. 
the potential for risks. Yeah. I think you found this one more stressful. Mm. You seemed more tense. Signs are, the signs are very stressful for me. Yes. Like I just cannot, I can't look at that and say, oh, okay, this. Okay. One in five driving tests are following road signs. Mm -hmm. One in five. Yeah. Okay. So the likelihood that you'll be following road signs is a lot less likely. Yeah. It's unlikely in comparison to following sat nav. But when it comes to when it comes to following road signs, it's a bit of a pain because the only difference is is if we, you, you should get well timed route directions. Mm -hmm. The sat nav, I've got to be honest. Sometimes the sat nav's route directions, the timings are awful, mm -hmm. late, and especially this sat nav, the yeah. the tom tom one. But with the sat nav, you're just trying to figure out is it right, left, ahead, aren't you? Yeah. So what's the difference on road signs? Mm, yeah. Could yeah. road signs in the UK be better? For sure, yeah, yeah. And better positioned, because I think that's also, I'm not like clear, like, okay, well, which way? Is it this thing right here? No, it's actually not that. It's further up there, you know? It's like very... While you are looking for wherever it is that you're going, do you remain safe? Yeah. You were kind of on the edge. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. That's like, yeah, very like... However, the thing. majority of it, the majority of it, I, I would, it would, yes, it's not how I would do it. And I would, you know, I'd, I wish it was a little bit better, but it, it, it's not on the main going to be escalating to serious fault because you're still in control. Yes, mm -hmm. it's that last minute sort of ducking in here and there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this has been Silly's Mock Test. I hope you've got some value out of it. If you have, as always, hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and I will see you in the next one. Get well out. Yeah. Mm -hmm.